<clears throat> What's up everybody and welcome to the Raw After Wrestlemania review. You know when it comes to Raw After Wrestlemania, it's usually the most excited time when watching Raw. And personally, I've always enjoyed the Raw After Wrestlemania. I'm always hyped for the Raw After Wrestlemania. I have fun watching the Raw After Wrestlemania, okay? I always have fun. You don't know what the crowd's gonna do. You don't know who's gonna come, gonna come out. It could be a return. It could be a debut. It could be a call-up. We don't know what's gonna go on. You don't know what the crowd's gonna do. Beach balls, chants, all that stuff. The whole nine yards. This tonight was not that night. Now, we haven't seen a Raw After Wrestlemania crowd in about two years now due to the pandemic and everything, especially, you know, when it was in the Performance Center and in the Thunderdome. So now this is the first time in two years now that fans are back in the building. So I'm expecting a bunch of crazy shit to go on and just, like, all that, the whole nine yards. This was not one of those nights. Honestly, this felt like another episode of Raw than it did a Raw after WrestleMania. Now, we did kick it off with probably my, most likely the best thing on this show was Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes came out. The American Nightmare himself, kind of promo, fans Shannon Cody, and you know, um, and stuff. And you know, he says, well, What do you guys want to talk about? He talked about it's been 47 days since Joe was announced he was a free agent, and he remained in silence, and all the rumors were going all over the place. And he says, Was this decision difficult uh, to come back to the WWE? He says, No, it wasn't. It was very simple. He said, It was the star that left them in the dust. Very uh, key word right there. But yes, the star that left them in the dust. Uh, he basically went on to talk about he signed a multi-year deal with the WWE, so, sorry, this camera's really messing with me right now. This camera never wants to stay up when it does, like, I, I, I never get that, but, um, yes, he signed a multi-year agreement. Mm. But Cody went on, uh, basically after signing that deal and stuff, um, basically fans chanting, you deserve it then. And, you know, he talked about he returned to WrestleMania. He defeated Seth Rollins, calling him one of the best in the world. And he talked about something he's, you know, he's been reading. Talking about a man often finds his destiny on the path uh, he takes to avoid it. Uh, Cody basically um, had, you know, the Titan Tron put up a picture of his dad, Dusty Rhodes. Um, you know, back in Madison Square Garden on September, I hate this camera right now, uh, 27, uh, 1977, of him winning the world title. Van Shan Dusty then, and he talked about the, you know, the title that a lot of people would eventually get their hands on from Hulk Hogan, which got booze, The Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, and Triple H too, he said. And he talked about this picture was on his parents' mantle until his dad's last day. And, you know, he talked about, you know, being eight years old and talked about his dad. Like, he says, I didn't know you were the champion. Fuck this camera, I swear to God. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, um, but... Yeah, he basically went on to talk about, um, what, what was I going on about? Yeah, talked about, you know, the title and everything, you know, say like Hulk Hogan, but Cody, you know, talked about how his dad looked at him and basically say he had the same look that he looks into his own kid and basically say, you know, he told him he won the match, the match, but because of count out, he can't take home the title belt. So he said eight years old, he talked about what he needed to do. He needed to win that title and, you know, we still find his, you know, his uh, dad talked about no one could take it away from him now when he gets that championship. But then he talked about, you know, unfortunately the dream died, he said. And has the opportunity passed or has it, he says. But, you know, he couldn't do it physically, put it in his dad's hand. But he wants to put it around the waist of the American Nightmare, which fans did chant Cody in. And uh, basically says, you know, um, his intentions are clear and he's standing before you know, the fans, uh, you know, he's finally ready, he says. He's ready to do it. He's going to do it. He's going to do it for the fans. He's going to do it for, you know, himself, his family, especially his dad, you know, calling him his hero. Uh, basically, Seth Rollins came out with his laughing pink suit, um, basically shaking Cody's hand before walking away, I guess, showing respect and even saying welcome home. Uh, overall, the pr Cody promo was great, I thought. Basically, a simple mission statement. You know, him going for the championship, we don't know which title, uh, but I'm sure he'll be going after Roman at some point. Uh, but going after the title, um, you know, doing it for his, um, you know, his dad and everything. You know, a uh, very good Cody promo. I know some would say maybe this was written for him. I feel like he may have had more direction. I know we talk about him and his AEW promos and how he goes all over the place in his, w his AEW promos. But, you know, him being back in the WWE, this is a great promo. You can tell he's very emotional out there when doing uh, this promo. I enjoyed it. Like I said, it was the best thing out of the entire show. 
Uh, next, though, was the women's tag titles were on the line. New women's tag team champions Sasha Banks and Naomi went against um, Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan. Um, match was okay, but Ripley ended up, you know, um, and Liv took the pin. Ripley was pissed off. Uh, Ripley basically left without her then, so uh, I think this tag team may be over pretty soon. But, um, yeah, Naomi and Sasha still retaining the titles. Kevin Owens came out and talked about how he had an underestimated Stone Cold Steve Austin. And, you know, uh, it takes somebody pretty special to beat him. And, um, you know, he talked about how he entered the match with a bad back injury. Yes, he says Steve Austin is still one of the greats. But, you know, um, he says, I, I suffered at the gym, you know, uh, lifting a lot of weights the day before and everything. And he said he should have went home. But he wanted to get the fans a WrestleMania main event. And he said that Austin uh, should be stricken from the record book, he said. But next thing you know, someone came out named Ezekiel. And I didn't know this was Elias at first. I really didn't know, okay? This was Elias, but clean shaven with different gear on. He damn near almost looked unrecognizable in my eyes at first. But when Owen said his name, Elias, he said, uh, no, 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 I'm not Elias. I'm his younger brother, Ezekiel. And Owen says, stop lying, okay? I, I hate liars, he says. Um... Um, all right, Ezekiel, um, you know, Ezekiel went on to Owen, so you must hate yourself because you got stunned on Saturday and everything. Owen says, I'm going to give you 10 seconds to get out of this ring or else, which he counted to 10 and, you know, he didn't do anything and he left. So I don't really know what to say about this Ezekiel thing. I guess I would say, give it a chance. I don't know where this is going. Uh, I know we have not heard from Elias in a while, and the last time I really heard about Elias was many, many months ago when they were doing those promos about Elias being dead and he was wearing a white hat. But now we have this clean-shaven, someone say a more muscular Damien Sand now, which has been said before. Uh, at first, you know, from afar, I actually thought it was LA Knight for some reason, but come on, um, Elias is more higher, t you know, taller, and um, has more hair. But I really did not recognize him. I really didn't know. Um... We'll see where this Ezekiel thing goes, but I don't I don't really know what to think about this all the way. Uh, Miz went against Dominic. Um, Miz won like 30 seconds. Who cares? Uh, next, we know we got Veer. The debut of Veer. The long-awaited debut. For months you have waited. For months you've been sitting at home. For months we did not know what this man is going to do. But Veer came out there. He um, basically took out the Mysterios and like, put Dominic in, like, a submission hold and, um, you know, beat them up right there. So, you know, Veer, this was some debut, folks. So, we'll see where this goes for Veer, but we have waited many, many months. So, this is the man. Veer. Veer, Veer, Veer. Uh, next, Bianca Belair, uh, came out there, basically taking off her glasses of a black eye she did suffer in that match against Becky Lynch. And honestly, this promo almost felt like she was about... I swear for a second, I was like, please don't relinquish the title. And she talked about... She says that, you know, she realized that, you know, it could all be taken away just like that. She's riding high, but, you know, SummerSlam gave her, you know, a wake-up call and everything. So, you know, she talked about how, um, you know, Be Becky tried to do everything, take everything from Bianca, you know, the title, her hair, um, her eye also, but... She's still here, and, you know, she's still standing in front of the fans, and she says she's better than Becky Lynch, and I'm going to be the best champion she can be, and, uh, you know, yeah, she says she knows what it's like to have a title snatched away from her, and she doesn't want everyone lose it like that again, and, you know, everything's different now after Saturday. She says she's better, and that Becky says, you know, uh, she takes some downtime, see who she is without the championship. So Bianca went on, um, she knows she is the Raw Women's Champion, and uh, basically, you know, held up the title after that. So uh, it was good, good for her. Good promo. I'm glad she didn't give up the title. I'm sure she'll the eye will heal in about maybe a week. But that was a pretty bad shiner. If you go back and look at the match at uh, WrestleMania with that 450, that kick, you know, hit Bianca Square in her eye. So um, pretty, pretty nasty shiner right there. But it should be healed in about a week though. Um, next NXT title on the line. Dolph Ziggler versus Braun Breaker. Why is this match happening here? Uh, why does Braun Breaker get a rematch? Why couldn't you save this until NXT on Tuesday night? Which they said, oh, he deserves another title shot. But he lost on Saturday. 
And I wonder, like, what is the point of doing this match again just for Braun Breaker to go over? I thought he had a pretty, you know, good, decent reaction out there. I'm not saying it was a mega pop or anything. It wasn't a bad match either, but it's like, why do it the title change now? And it's like, even the crowd was more better last Saturday. And I watched the show. The crowd was at least a little bit more hotter for it at Stand and Deliver. And then again, why not just change the belt there? Why wait on Raw? Because you wanted a bigger audience. And I don't think half this audience really cared on Monday. Uh, Monday, uh, And you could have just done it on Saturday. So, I get they just wanted more people to see it just to know who this guy is, honestly. I think that's why, but... I just think it's kind of strange to do that, and then right after, uh, we're going to play a commercial for NXT and talk about Ziggler. Well, he lost the belt now, so what was the point of playing that commercial? So, very strange on just giving Breaker another title shot just because. MVP was in the ring talking about Bobby Lashley. You know, actions speak louder than words, and Lashley did that at WrestleMania. Um, basically, you know, he brought out Lashley. Lashley talked about he beat almost and everything, and, you know, um, he knew they could beat him and everything, and... You know, Lashley's back. He's at his top of his game right there. But almost came out there wanting a rematch. Next thing you know, um, you know, MVP uh, hit Lashley in the back with his cane. Say, you don't need me, huh? You don't need me, huh? And basically, you know, um, kicked um, Lashley and almost did his finisher on him. So, yeah, MVP uh, turning on him. It's interesting to see where this will go. So, I guess we can finally say, and we already know it's been dead. But the whole Hurt business is officially dead. And that's pretty sad. But we'll see what Amos does with MVP. He needs a someone to speak for him anyway. So let's see how that goes. I know Lashley still needs somebody to speak for him. But Lashley is decent on the mic sometimes. Um, Liv uh, Morgan and Rhea Ripley in the back. Uh, which Ripley says, you know, she convinced Adam Pearce we're going to get another title match next week. She's sorry for what happened. Which she is thing that doesn't make sense. So, oh, like, you guys lost at WrestleMania. You lost on Monday Night Raw. But you're getting another title rematch because you convinced Adam Pearce to give you lost two times. Why are you another title shot for? That doesn't make sense. Uh, Carmella and Zelina were out there. Um, basically, I guess they had their WrestleMania gear on. Um, basically, they were supposed to do a match, but Vega ended up eliminating. Uh, Vega ended up uh, blaming Carmella for losing the tag team titles, and that's just so focused on Corey Graves and you know talk, talk about he's a handsome man. She said, but. Uh, Carmella took the mic and says, you know, I was, you know, I was gonna make you one of my bridesmaids. How about I make you the flower girl, which is leaning up punching her in, which, um, Gray tried to break it up, and then, you know, Vega went off, went away, and then they start making out with each other, um, you know, Graves and Carmella, so, that tag team is dead, folks. Uh, the Usos was talking about Austin Theory, talking about, hey, look, look at you, man, you know, we won, I'm at your WrestleMania, but you lost, you're supposed to be Vince's next guy, right? Huh? You lost, you got stunned by, like, you got took out by Austin and got beat by ex-NFL punk kicker and whatnot. But, um, you know, Theory says McAfee got lucky. He said, Vince McMahon did not make no mistake. I'm the biggest investment that he's ever made in. And, um, basically, he said, you know, Balor uh, might as well be McAfee because, you know, he's going to catch some rounds uh, here tonight, he said. So, I guess the Usos tried to motivate him, which we did have Finn Balor and RK Bro. Versus uh, Usos and Austin Theory. Not a bad match. But once again, folks. Finn Balor. How many times has he been pinned by Austin Theory? Three, four times. You know that title match is coming. So I don't expect Finn to have that belt really long. Because I'm, he's just taking L's all over the place lately to be the U.S. champion. Uh, Edge came out there. The Under Edge. Or the Edge Taker. Or he talked about the cutting the promo. So he's an honest man. And he didn't expect Damian Priest to appear at WrestleMania. And you know... Basically, he talked about AJ Styles then, and, you know, he's looking at his inner self, but he said, like, preseason upstanding role mo model to the fans, and, uh, just as he is right now. And Edge said that the fans must rise for the man who will punish, who will be the punishment for the guilty. Damian Priest, and he talked about these fans as sheep, which they did say we are sheep, by the way, which was funny. Uh, Edge basically asked, you know, uh, what caused you to, to do this, huh? Priest said, you know, it goes without saying much, you know, you meant it a lot for a very long time. Um, I mean, a lot to him, but, uh, Priest went on to say, you know, talking about AJ Styles and everything, he said, basically, went on, you know, it was an easy decision to pledge himself to Edge, which by the fans, they, the fans are chanting, we don't care, we don't care, and say, we are losers, I, I don't know, there's chanting anything out there, um, but he says it's the best decision he's made in his life, and, um, you know, we have a message, he says, that we're taking the power back and stuff, we have a lot of intellect and, and everything, and he says that 
He and Ed says, you know, I brought out AJ. I brought the pit bull out of you, but pit bulls lack intellect. Okay, they only know how to fight in that flight. And you need to think about your family. You need to think about your children. That's who you need to be fighting for right now. Which AJ Styles came out and attacked both of them. He was going to hit his own concerto on the edge, but Priest took him out. Edge and his thing, Edge did a spear, and Priest did like a leg sweep at the same time, like a double team thing. They were going to go for a concerto, but uh, like security, like agents and referees came out and break it up. As the fans did chant Jamie Noble, by the way. Um, Edge. Listen, man, I've said it before, this is basically Ministry of Darkness 2.0 or the Ministry of Edge. I said this all in the WrestleMania review. I don't know where this new dark under edge, under whatever this is, is going. So I have no idea, okay? Um, it's some, Like I said, the, the Punisher of this and the guilty, the judge, the jury, the whatever this group they're going by right now. So the House of Edge, the, the Dark Edge, the, just the Ministry of Darkness 2.0, the, the Brood. This is like the new brew, the brew 2.0 or updated version of the brew. I don't know. It's some Undertaker shit to me. So, yeah. The Street Profits went against Alpha Academy. Alpha Academy attacked from behind. You know, um, Gable being back after being, you know, taken out by uh, Gable Stevenson. That's two Gables right there. Um, basically, Pierce says, you know what? We're going to have a Texas Tornado match. Um, Profits end up winning the match then. So, that happened. But in the end, uh, Roman Reigns came out. The new uh, WWE and Universal Champion. Uh, basically, Usos and Paul Heyman was there with him. Uh, Reigns, you know, having the belts. Well, which, um, um, you know, well, I think Reigns was legitimately hurt at uh, WrestleMania and stuff. I think they said, dude, it was like his arm or something. So I'm not really sure how that's um, going. Maybe that's why he didn't have the holding the belts out there. But I don't know, man. I don't know if his injury had to do anything why the match ended so anticlimactically. So, I, I, I'm not really sure what's going on with that or if Roman is still hurt right now. But Paul Heyman, you know, went on just hyping all this stuff. You know, we had the highest buys in WrestleMania. We got this at WrestleMania. You know, um, we made so much money than we've ever did right now. And he says, you know, I just I know what you want. You know, the bloodline success. We've done a lot, all right? The Usos are still the champions. And, you know, it's, you know, Rain says, you know, it's good for him, it's good for the WWE. You know, we got billion-dollar deals all over the place. I'm in constant in God mode all the time. And I told you I was going to smash Brock Lesnar, but that's the past now. We, you know, a lot of people hang their hat over the week. I'm a consistent champion. I'm a, I'm a progressive tribal chief. He's tribal chief. They said, I want everybody to know, you know, uh, the next step is on Friday night SmackDown. I basically told everybody to acknowledge him. And that was the end of the show. That was it. No big ending, no... Nobody didn't come out. Nobody didn't do. I'm thinking somebody was going to come out and do something. Nothing happened. Okay? Nothing. Honestly, this was not a very good Raw after WrestleMania. I don't know if it was because of two days of Mania or how many shows that happened over the weekend. But we really got nothing on this show. What? You got Elias' new repackaged gimmick. You had Veer finally debuting and stuff. But other than that, and Cody Rhodes' promo. But other than that, nothing really happened on this show. This crowd wasn't as hot. I thought they did a couple things, but it's not like, you know, any other WrestleMania crowd where they're always hyped for the next three hours and doing anything out there. So nothing really happened. Honestly, this wasn't even a Raw after WrestleMania, like I said. This was just another episode of Monday Night, Monday Night Raw. It didn't get hell. You had the NXT title on there, and that didn't really do much. So I don't know, man. This was not a hot Raw after WrestleMania crowd, okay? Just this, this didn't have work. It didn't have work. And I'm used to seeing the Raw After Mania be really cool and insane and just a lot of stuff going on. But this was not that night. And it's really unfortunate because I was looking really forward to this. And maybe that's because of an expectation thing. I'm not sure. But, man, this that sucked. I just thought that Raw After WrestleMania was not, this was not good. It was not good at all. Okay? But other than that, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at Hood Night 890 I'm out of here. I'll see you guys later. Peace. Check out the WrestleMania review. Night 1, Night 2, NXT Stand and Deliver, Ring of Honor, Super Card of Honor, online right now. Go check those reviews out right now. I'm out of here. See you guys then. Peace.